Oh, yes, move the knight into there, keep the great general in range. That's a nice little catch. Knight on knight combat, and oh, yeah, it's not going to run away from that. Third city following my religion as well. Another two faith per turn, just the little increments. They're all very good to see. We've unlocked monarchy, so we will convert over to the government. A lot more military policy slots than this government, which we like. Oligarchic legacy, keep our plus four combat strength from before, otherwise everything remains pretty much the same. Plus three combat strength is just about what I need right now. Let's go merchant confederation, another 12 gold per turn, never goes badly wrong. And there's castles boosted as well. A great merchant, another trade route. Oh, this one actually gives you a trader as well, which is really handy, because now, I I can send the route over to Geneva, get myself an envoy, but more importantly, start laying a road. There's education. Still working on my aqueduct, but it's okay. We're getting there quickly. Let's quickly pick up sailing, start making our way at the top of the tech tree, and you can see 22 techs for Macedon, 21 for me. We are very much keeping up with what's going on. Okay, the great person has arrived as well as a lot of pikemen. My knight is just going to run around killing the siege equipment, whilst my pikemen themselves have a little crack at this city. Oh yeah, that's pretty, pretty decent. There's the military engineering boost I was looking for. We can get trebuchets now. Excellent. Looks like Russia is insisting that my capital and second city follow their religion. Don't really mind that, to be fair. I'm, I'm busy, you know, working on my own religion in the south, so kind of works for me. Their attention is elsewhere and distracted. Will we take this city? Let's find out. One attack, two attacks. Ooh, nope, next turn. But we're close now. The first Macedonian city has been taken. About 10 turns after the war was declared. I'm going to keep it. And it's already loyal. This is what happens when you attack someone in the Dark Age and you are in a Golden Age. It's very good. We'll bring Victor over just immediately to get him established and have me show you what a nine tile radius is for the plus four. Uh, all of these cities, so pretty effective. I'd like my pikeman blocking that knight from being able to attack. So I'm going to get the knight to attack and then Jono to go and finish it off. Oh, it didn't finish off. Dear, oh dear. Never mind. Let's upgrade trebuchet time. Oh, ho, ho. That's a lot more powerful. That's looking mighty good. There's another two pop city down to the south. I suggest we go and investigate whilst moving my pikeman over. And we've got a lot of reinforcements on the way. If you can see the, the, the sheer scale of the army that's uh, heading in this direction. 800 military strength. Mainly because I just kept my old army alive. It's all the same, you know, forces. And I've just moved from one side of the map to the other. Now, where is the nighter? That is under a city, brilliant, and under a district. So we're already getting four per turn. That means, in theory, we can immediately go for a musket. Some more nighter up there. Yeah, we're going to have plenty of nighter to get our muskets out. And once we've got muskets, we can immediately go to Pike and Shot for the upgrade on our pikemen. There we go. With that promotion, Grand Columbia has decided they finally want to be my friend. Okay, friendship time? Great. We're going to get a military alliance. Now, if you go to a joint war with your military ally, you get plus five combat strength against enemy units. It's a very effective little upgrade. So we're definitely keeping an eye out for that. There's another trebuchet. Moving my units forward really, really nicely now. A flanked knight being attacked with a pikeman is one of those wonderful things. It's stronger than me, but I do way more damage to it. Beautiful. How much health has that got? It's like one or two left. Because I've got such a large army, my capital is just doing this sort of thing. This is the Apadana. Two envoys when you build a wonder, including Apadana, in this city. I mean, why would you not? Colosseum's still available, actually, so that is something I've been eyeing up as well. In order to get that built, I'm going to get myself another builder in the city. That'll get to 10 pop, and then I'll be able to build Colosseum relatively near my culture districts. Just to really boost that up. What's this on? Is that a plus nine now? Oh, yes, it is. Stunning. One attack, two attacks. I mean, trebuchets are very annoying to kill because they have a lot of defensive bonuses. They're really not strong against units. They're, they're just annoying to kill. We can deal with annoying units. They're, well, more annoying than they are actually actually powerful. There's Reformed Church. I've got six cities following my own religion now. As I say, we have access to another wonderful card, Wars of Religion. Problem for me at the moment is that Greece isn't following another religion. It's just everybody else, effectively. Russia's been spreading their religion nicely. This is why I wanted my own religion sort of alongside 
being able to use this card. It's actually, I don't want Russia to ever be in a position where they're totally unopposed going for that religious victory. At least I have something that's now stopping them and that's in my control. As soon as I go to war with either Russia, Brazil or Grand Colombia, I can get plus four combat strength against them, which is lovely. Speaking of, this is a scientist that turns Holy Site adjacency into science. And I have one Holy Site there, which is plus one. There's a plus four being built and a plus three. So I'm going to move her over to the plus four. Oh, that's well worth keeping an eye on. There are muskets in Macedon. They will rip my pikemen apart. Look at that. Even the grand helicopter kicker with a lot of melee defense can't really land a good blow. It's okay. It's okay. We will tech up pretty quick. I've almost got access to my own muskets. I was just wondering whether or not I should wait until I get an armory, but I think rushing it through and rushing to pike and shot is definitely the good thing right now. So I'm going to actually pillage this campus and start to build up a little bit of a pillage economy. Me. It's one of my favorite things where you just pillage districts repeatedly, claiming many times the yield of benefit than if you just owned the city. It's it's really good just to pillage every district you can. Oh yeah, the pikemen took a lot of damage there. Okay, we've got to set up a bit more of a defensive perimeter here now. One, two, three. Are we gonna get four and kill? No, next turn, but still close. Go on, helicopter kicker. Hold the line. Hold the line. Yes. Look at that. Just absolutely, totally destroyed a warrior charging into it. Rubbish. Anyway, shells on a trebuchet. Means we can rename this one now. Welcome, Sean Kelly. I'm going to need you to attack very brutally. Salty Tech, in the meantime, leads the charge successfully on the southern city. And now we pull our troops forward to reinforce our northern march. Got my great person. I just need to bring forward a little bit quickly so that this knight can help with the attack. One, two, like that. Perfect. We just keep getting culture on all of these kills as well. Just to keep stacking. Three science per trade route to Geneva, by the way. Very good little blend of gold and science. Okay, we lost one unnamed pikeman, but what's happened is that this musket has now left the safety of its own city. I think it's going to regret doing that. Is that a hill? No, that's not a hill tiles. Actually, I can move this trebuchet round one and then move you onto the hill and we can start bombarding the city from a distance, which is now a lot weaker, seeing as the musket is left the city. It's going to pull these troops back. As I say, helicopter kicker is very, very strong when defending against melee and the zone of control I'm putting around here means this musket really can't get round to attack the meat of my army. Quite a nice little defensive formation I've got going there. Even the hot lights are actually quite annoying for the musket to try and defeat. This is a real sort of like mass assault. The more troops you send into one assault, the more chance you've got of at least one breaking through and doing good. Auckland's been taken from me. Well, that's not very nice. I, I saved eight envoys up for this because don't forget, Greece gets one every time you finish one of your unique districts. Brazil is also deciding they don't mind me. Interesting. I don't mind this at all. This is good. Oh, look at that. They're really desperate for luxuries and they're willing to give me some books for some stuff. Yeah, you know what, Brazil? You're going to be good friends. Embassy, open borders, all of the things that just increase their opinion of me and then we'll see if we can swing them into being my ally. There's no point fighting anyone more than one per turn. Well, you know, one, one person at a time is plenty. Now, the musket has decided to bypass helicopter kicker, which is quite amusing. You can do that if you want, but it's not going to win you this game. There we go. Haha. -ha. I've taken the city and destroyed the knight that was in it at the same time. Moksha, you get into the city and secure it for me now. Now the musket won't be able to kill my trebuchet on the hill. It's too strong. So what I'm going to do is just now surround it with other weaker units in order to basically just like force it. Like you attack me, do a little bit of damage to yourself. And the longer you wait, the more reinforcements I'm bringing up. And I'm just going to swarm attack attack you. Good to know that Boulevard is up for a war with Russia. Very good indeed. I was just looking to see how Macedon was going to respond to this and they're actually pulling their musketmen back and away from my scary, scary hoplites. Yeah, that's right. That's what I thought. Back off, friend. Right. 53 strength. Oh, that's a, that's a chunky city. I've sort of gone through my builder phase, so I'm actually going to get rid of serfdom now. And one card that I was going to pick up was plus two loyalty per turn for cities with a garrisoned unit, as well as plus two 
to loyalty from governors. Those two cards added together mean that this city that I've just taken over goes hopefully from minus eight to minus four. That has taken it from flipping in five turns to flipping in about 11. Now that means we've got time to improve our beautiful, beautiful trebuchets over to bombards, which should be good. I can promote them both as well. It means I've also got time just to hold on with my units for a second around Geneva and promote everyone. I've got so many units now just waiting in friendly territory, ready to be upgraded. I'll just sort of move my troops around. I'll, I'll flip different ones to different locations, but this, oh, this will be good. I can run with pike and shot rather than regular pikemen. You can see I've also increased my military policies to four. So I've got plus four now, which is actually the same as the deity bonus. Now, if you're at war as well, it's always worth keeping an eye on the strength of enemy walls. You can see they've gone to fortification health 200. That means they are no longer ancient walls, they're medieval walls. You need a siege tower instead. A monopoly on the great merchants is a wonderful thing. Another 200 gold as well as an extra envoy. Got seven spare at the moment. Haven't met many city states, but we'll hang on to these until they become a a bit more useful. I need to make sure that I've got a great general in range quickly and this one works on Renaissance era units. That is a good thing because when I upgrade to Pike and Shot they will be Renaissance as well as Bombard so my great generals are not going to work. Now I could wait but Macedon is likely to buy them out at some point and I don't want Macedon going around with a musketman boosting great general although it looks like they're going to now pick up Timur but that means that next turn I can teleport uh, the great general down straight to this city do myself some good. I'm looking ahead actually and as good as feudal contract is I'm going to put maritime industry in. One thing that I've been doing is very carefully sticking to the bottom of a tech tree so that I haven't got cartography which unlocks caravels or frigates. Now that means the best boats I can build at the moment are galleys and quadrireams. Both of them are very cheap and both of them get boosted by the 100% maritime industries card. You can crank galleys out very quickly. Now I've got to cross the sea and I would like at least three or four caravels and three or four frigates in order to make that trip. And that card is a very good way of rapidly getting that sort of stuff out. I don't have many naval cities, so the ones I do have have got to work fairly hard, but we can get them to work hard. Two trebuchets, we've got a musket. Macedon have an army, but honestly, it's not the scariest army I've ever seen. So let's get upgrading. We need 20 night up, but luckily I've got six coming in per turn and we've been stockpiling for a little while. So bombard number one, bombard number two. Actually, we need a new name for this one. Welcome Lord Paulie. You and Sean Kelly. Well, you need to do Lord's work here. You absolutely do. Um, and I'm going to need a great general to assist in this, but yeah, okay, they've got a pretty decent kick in the teeth with their attack. Now, a pikeman to a pike and shot is pretty cheap. So we're going to make sure that our frontline troops have that. Helicopter kicker, you're included in that as well. As of these two, Jono, you are included in this. There we go. Hoplite straight to pikeman is quite expensive as upgrades go, so I won't do that one just yet. But as I pick up a great artist, which is pretty cool, I can now look at which techs I want. I could keep going and unlock field cannons, but I always prefer going across the bottom of the tech tree now. Printing gives you one level of diplomatic visibility over the AI, which is a really lovely thing because that's three combat strength for every level you have. We're going to pick up printing and then we're going to go to military science, which will unlock cavalry and line inventory, both units with over 60 combat power. Very, very powerful and very easy to spam. My first boat. My first boat. Wow, that came out quick. I must have chopped that one out. Okay, perfect. We're just going to build a small navy now. As I say, about four galleys and four quadrireams, then we'll upgrade them later. Should be plenty. Now, as you can see, this is a lovely flat tower, which means I can shoot over it. So we're going to get Sean Kelly and we're going to get Lord Pawley. Just uh, using the great general's extra movement to launch on top of a hill and go wabam, wabam. Uh, next turn, we should be able to remove that set of walls. The musket has come back across cross the river. It really doesn't know what to do here. It's, uh, it just keeps going backwards and forwards, but now my crossbow's in range. I can start just taking little pot shots at it, which is quite amusing. So I'm going to just bring my better units forward and yeah, might as well just take a little nibble at it. The ranged attacks against my units are just so weak at the moment. Six against the pike and shot, seven against the bombard. Lord Paulie laughs at the tickle, the basic tickle that has been sent their way. 
Don't mind me though, as I pillage a little bit. Let's go and do that. And I believe Helicopter Kicker can go and kick this city nicely. Yep, next turn we should easily be able to take over that. And oh, the trebuchets appear to want to play. That's interesting. That is certainly interesting. Uh, Jono can oversee this uh, particular combat, but there is exploration. Gives me access to a Merchant Republic. I've gone Monarchy because of the extra influence points on Envoys, but really, it's probably not worth it. I like military policies. It's the best government for that, so we're going to keep it for now, but you can change that sort of government and it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world at all. Uh, crossbows beat trebuchets any day. I'm sorry. Back off, friend. Again, every time all <laughs> Auckland is taken, uh, just take it back with your plentiful supply of envoys. Pike and Shot makes one attack and Helicopter Kicker should be able to just clear the city out. There we go. Beautiful stuff. This city is now all comfortably loyal. I reckon we're going to take out the encampment first before we take out the actual city itself. I'm going to keep my knight there. Oh, look, there are enemy troops. Unfortunately for them, I am close and I am uh, very much, <laughs> very much vested to defeat this party. Look, it's just trebuchets and knights. Don't do that. Come now. I'm just going to push through. Bit of flanking and I should be able to take that on. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. And we're just promoting as we advance. This pike and shot will absolutely bash that knight back if it tries to get anywhere near me. Macedon has three cities left, apparently. And they are attacking my bombards a little bit, but not too bad. Ah, uh, not very interesting things. Although, saying that, I would like it if we could trade with scientific city-states again, because I'm getting a lot of science from those routes. When resources comes, just have a look at whichever is the bottom option. Mercury tends to be the one, but I'm going to pick Ivory because I don't have it. Pick option B, select Ivory. We'll see if it goes through. Uh, it's never entirely sure. Mercury, yeah, it's always the bottom option. All right, we lose a bit of happiness from that. Oh, certainly do lose a little bit of happiness from that. That's an interesting place to leave your knight. Like a very interesting place to leave your knight. Okay, let's get the crossbow shot off and then just an instant kill. Blimey. One, two... I need a few more siege weapons, I think. That's probably the, the one thing I'm missing a little bit on here. I was saying that we've got ourselves some pretty good weaponry in the form of these pike and shots. One attack and then two attacks. The encampment is dead. Oh, we're going to take Mashi Pishu if we knock Macedon out of the game. That's quite nice. The city-state emergency failed, by the way, which gives me 200 Diplo favor. A very, very good amount of Diplo favor. Means I can look to see what the AI will give me. And they're going to give me lots of books as well as gold. I'll take a book. A bit more culture per turn. 42 gold per turn. Yeah, no, that's not... I mean, admittedly, the gold per turn's good, but I'm pillaging more at the moment. So I throw 20 iron into the deal and I can take three great works from Brazil in one go. Nice. That's a lot of extra culture per turn. We're going to methodically move forward, however, Lord Pauly, Sean Kelly, you know what to do. Rain down hellfire. Keeping the siege equipment at the front, we're just sort of transferring troops forwards and backwards based on how much health they've got. I'm going to weaken Pella at the same time. 61 strength is very, very strong. I think, yep, that's Renaissance walls. You can always tell Renaissance walls are being built because they've got really pointy tops to them and it looks like they're being built in this city as well. Just means we're going to need the siege equipment a little bit. But when that's happened, you can see when I attack the city, it's got plus four from districts. So we'd better pillage the districts. Otherwise, we're not going to get through. So, you know, we'll, we'll forcibly take all of the stuff. I mean, yeah, now at these, this point, I'm just pillaging everything. Speaking of, I should probably stick the raid card in. Conscription saves me 28 gold per turn. But if I'm getting 50% extra on pillaging, then honestly, I'm going to save a lot more gold from getting all of that stuff sorted. I'm also going to just take a one combat strength penalty now to stick campus back in. Don't need the loyalty anymore. I am doing very, very nicely. This great scientist acts as a medic, plus 20 health to adjacent units. Very, very handy when you're sieging a city. So, yep, I'm going to bring them to the front line. There we go. Printing. That's an effective plus three combat strength against Macedon. You can see it from intel on opponent's movements. I send a spy over, which I'm going to do very soon. That'll be even better. Now we're going to go castles, siege tactics, military science. So remember, we've got Moksha in the city. So if I heal this unit on four health, it should heal its entirety of its health in one turn, which would be pretty nice. And we're going to go one attack, two attacks. Walls are down. Attack, attack, 
city's mine. And then the knight is just going to, yep, siege and, and sort of move around the back as we move to this city now, which is our next target. In fact, we can even get to it this turn. So I just charge my units forward to siege it as fast as possible. There we go. Look, it is effectively sieged, which means I can use my siege tower to do health damage to the city that will not recover. That is a perfect attack, that. A bit more science as well. Oh, you see how effective these pillages are. Very, very good. Oh, it turns out I can actually get Brazil on side in this war. Grand Colombia haven't met Macedon yet. That, that feels unlikely, but sure. Grand Colombia hasn't bothered with the sea. The sea is of very little importance to them, and I, I understand and respect that. My capital has built Great Library, not because it's particularly useful, but it does have a couple of slots for Great Works, which stack really well with Pingala, and the Apadana is in this city, so I get another two envoys later into the game. It's all about stacking those envoys to make sure that I can use the city-states to attack later. Let's take a little chunk of these walls walls off. Oh, that's a, that's more than a little chunk of the walls, let me tell you that. And again, it's all of these bonuses. Three from Gorgo, three from Intel, five from a general, four from Oligarchic Legacy. We're taking a 55 strength unit and attacking with 70 power, which means I can, once I pillage this tile, just to get myself a little bit of uh, food and health and this for a little bit of gold to upgrade some more units, it means we can go uh, one, two, three, like that and just take it. And it's mine. Okay, Pella is sieged. It's got some very strong walls, but it is sieged. Irene of Athens grants me a new governor, and William Shakespeare grants me two new books. Something for the Great Library. Beautiful. I'm actually just going to grab cartography before I go for military science, just because I've got so many galleys now, I've actually switched to making quadrooms, but I might as well get the caravel upgrade sorted before we go out. As you can see, my science is pretty damn crazy. Just a few fun facts about that science. It's purely based on city numbers. I have 118 population in 20 cities. Cities. To put that in context, Brazil has 10 and 40, 10 and 67, 7 and 30. So I actually have, I think, just about more population than everyone else combined. A little bit less, but with it's very close. I've got no universities up as well. That is just random campuses uh, across my land doing at least plus three, which is very nice. So at this point, I, after this war is finished, if you wanted to then continue this game, you could just stick on this island and, and stay here and just take the entire continent and, and you could win culture, science, religion. It's, it's basically your choice. You could do whatever you wanted. We're, we're going to continue, you know, taking advantage of this snowball we've created because we've got 28 tech and we're four tech ahead of Russia, who is in second place now. That's right, we have a tech lead over the deity AI. It's very rare you see that, but we will enjoy it whilst we can. We've just met another city-state. <laughs> Buttress, who is it? It's the city-state that provides us culture when we finish a building. Excellent, actually, so we're going to change our government now. I don't need this loyalty card. I don't know why I've still got that in. Instead, we're going to pick up... Oh, Vistle Bank is tempting because I've got about six trade routes with the city-state at the moment, but I don't need it, so we'll go for it extra gold per turn, I think it's probably the best way to do things. Or, no, hang on, we'll put Diplomatic League in just temporarily, because now I can go one envoy for two, and then one, two, three, four, five, take over the city-state, and explore a lot of the map doing it. So, Brazil is directly to my right, as is Gran Colombia, but Russia is the other side, and that's the army side, so it's definitely Russia we're going to be going for first. Let's get these walls down. Let's just keep pillaging first, but walls down. Come on, get them down. Get the pillaging going as well. And I'm just going to fortify around the city to stop anyone from escaping. It's sieged. We've got all the time in the world right now, all the reinforcements in the world as well. In fact, I'm actually going to start moving my army in the other direction. It's no longer needed here. We're going to actually take advantage of the fact that it's not needed yet. Look at this. So this is what I meant about the trade routes, by the way. Every Every route I send to Geneva is worth three science. So I'm actually getting 18 science per turn, which is almost as much as Macedon's currently getting, to put it in context. Russia's religion is proving pretty sticky, and I don't want to be converted to their religion once I take over the rest of Macedon. So I'm actually going to use one apostle to launch an inquisition, which is very handy because it means I can get inquisitors and they can remove the religion very quickly. Pella is doing the absolute best it can to keep attacking Lord Pauli, but Lord Pauli's just sat here going, you're just leveling me up. Stop it. What are you doing? You know that it's futile. I will be here forever. Lord Pauly is inevitable. In fact, actually, 87. Yeah, if he gets attacked once more, <laughs> he'll level up. 
Oh, yeah, no, just the rest of my army is, is absolutely now making its way over to the sea. As you can see, look at this. We have got four galleys and then a fifth on the way. We've got quadriums being made now and we're just about to get the caravel upgrade. Best bit about this city as well is there's a lot of choppable resources in it. I could probably chop out some boats at double pace. Do I want to do that? Yes, I probably do, but I might go monumentality to make use. I, I don't know, actually. Oh, musician. Musician is really fun. There you go. Got space for it. Yay! Extra culture. 178 culture per turn. Very handy stuff. Sun Tzu, I'm retiring now. The art of war. To win a war is not to lose. To iron one's socks is to straighten one's feet. Yeah, what did I say? What did I say? Lord Paulie laughs at this. I'm going to promote, which means that I now have expert crew can attack after moving. Helpful for when I'm not in range of a great general. But I've also got the medic just behind, so not acting that turn means that Lord Paulie will gain a large chunk of health as well. Actually, we've got both bombards now up to level three. I have a general here that I can retire, which will grant a promotion to a land unit. I am very tempted to do that on one of my bombards, actually, to get it level four and have an extra range that would be very handy and so you know what? I will do it I'm going to treat myself that's what I'm going to do so we go two hits nine each time and then healing of plus 25 because of the medic there we go invincible siege units well not quite invincible but you know you get the point and uh, oh and now I can do I think a salvo of pike and shot attacks get Jono to attack last go on bring up the rear oh last turn Macedon will fall I no longer need these reinforcements let me tell you that great scientist that gives me a bunch of boosts cool love it i'll go away brazil no one cares i got a cartography Damn, i knew i shouldn't have done that astronomy and uh, naval tradition okay we, with some very bad bonuses there but never mind square rigging will give me frigates i've got at least one frigate that i've produced now in caravel form it's gonna be six turns am i gonna have enough time to get another one out five yes in theory i do i have enough to get another three out so we'll do that yeah why not the world enters the renaissance era now the renaissance offers us an interesting policy monumentality well we've got a bit more faith now we could produce builders and exodus of evangelists would help me to remove russia's religion quickly although now that i've got inquisitors i'm not so worried about doing that quick i just need to make sure that i am not converted to that religion reform of coinage gives you gold per specialty district in a foreign city now looking at geneva they have a campus but alas that is it so i would get three gold on six of my trade routes which is 18 per turn however hicks on Traconas, two loyalty per turn for cities not on my original continent well that's everything over here but more importantly everything over here as well but even better two movement for naval and embarked units that's huge that means I can now take my entire navy and embarked army and move them very quickly indeed. Let me tell you, four embarked movement rather than two, that makes a big old difference. You may notice I'm bringing great people, like an artist and a musician with me. They're actually scouting out the way before my troops end up going over, so that is quite deliberate. I do realize I need to be upgrading my caravels, which I can now do with professional army. That's oh, actually, this works quite well. I'm just going to get Hannibal to retire and give Lord Pauly the fourth promotion which actually heals them this turn as well and uh, Jono can you do me the honors and take out Macedon oh oh bless you I'm sorry your long march you didn't really march anywhere I don't want to point fingers but um you didn't really march anywhere that actually that timed perfectly because that was a new age so I just got a bunch of era to score towards um the next era which which is wonderful right Pella's just going to need a moment to fix itself, but once it does, it'll be very happily contributing. And I think I've got quite a lot of adjacency on a lot of my districts near mountains. Although typically the only things I put near mountains are holy sites and campuses, so maybe that doesn't give you, doesn't do too much. Right, here we go. Two caravels. Let's get those upgraded. We'll send those as a scouting force ahead as I wait for my quadrilliums to finish. We ended that conquest, by the way, with 21 cities and two friends. Now that I'm actually in peace, Geneva gives me 15% bonus science in all of my cities, which is lovely. Russia's denounced me. All they're doing there is making my war declaration on them a lot easier, so I won't complain. And here's Mahabodhi Temple. I built this because I wanted two apostles for three, and I have two apostles for three now. 
Beautiful wonder. Oh, next to the glowing fields as well with all that science. An industrial zone with lots of production is finished in my capital. Let's evangelize that belief. Evangelize that belief. So we're going to quickly build a spy. Hadn't built one up to this point. Been focused on other things, but it's time. It's now time. Caravels with seven movement. Delicious. Oh, you see, look, I found a Russian ship already. So it's definitely worth it. A great artist has already scouted that Barbarian Island is still full of barbarians. So we're going to move my embarked army not in that direction. I'm going to retire my medic as well now. Square rigging gets boosted. Oh, oh, that's actually not good. I've got a few turns left on that one. So let's switch back over now to military science. What am I going to do with my religion? Interesting choice. Mosque. That gives me an extra spread with units. Very handy, especially if you don't want to put it in too many of your cities. And we'll go holy order for missionaries and apostles being cheaper to purchase. Excellent. It's just basically all of the tools I need to get rid of Russia's influence over my lands. Interesting little factoid. Rio, obviously on the coast, as is St. Petersburg. That's pretty good considering I want to effectively skip around and do the minimum fighting we can. I don't need the raid card at the moment. So I'm going to switch now to Wars of Religion. That effectively gives me plus four combat strength against Russia because they follow a different religion to me. Well, laying on of hands is very, very handy. Victor's quite handy as well. I need gold though, so I'm going to take Arena and put Arena in a city with a lot of adjacency on its natural buildings like Gao. Yeah, yeah, this is a good city. Lovely. I know just Amani has actually been sat in my city for ages. There's no reason, you know, there's nowhere else better to put her at the moment, but it's just like you look at it and you're like, whoops. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Hennis, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, Intigi Golfman, Victor McPupster. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!